announcements. Uh, we will be hosting the Lenten study with the soup supper for the next two Wednesdays. Uh, soup will be served starting at 5.30 with the study at 6 o'clock. And it's a 30-minute study. And the topic this week is on giving. Uh, we're doing a topical study. I was asked to remind people that the UNW has uh, Easter cards for sale uh, in the back. Um, so if anyone is interested in uh, Easter cards, um, they have Easter cards for sale. This week's schedule is as normal, so we will have a 3 o'clock Wednesday um, lectionary study, 5 o'clock Galatian study on, um, on the Facebook Live, and then the 6 o'clock, or 5.30, 6 o'clock Lenten study, and Thursday we're having the prayer meeting. It's here at this church, I thought we had to study that enough, but we are hosting. Yep, we're hosting for the next two weeks. Okay. Everyone who thirsts, come to the water. <clears throat> come, weary and worn. And God will fill your soul. For God bring blessing, even in the midst of pain. Let us pause for a silent reflection. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. O oh God, oh God, we seek you. Our souls thirst for you. Our spirit long for you. For we are parched and weary in the desert of time. These were men's places. But your love, O oh God, is better even than life. Our words will praise you. Our actions bless you. Let us seek the Lord where God may be found. Call upon the Holy One who is near. We will bless you as long as we live. We will lift up our hands and call on your name. Hymn number 361 and 362 as far as the melody.
the gift of your son Jesus. Keep us close to him and loyal to his leading so that we may never thirst for righteousness but live eternal life through our Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen. to the 
power of the sword. They shall be praised for jackass. For the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear in God's name shall glory, but the mouths of liars will be stopped. Our second reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 13. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They were all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolatrous as some of them were. As it was is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples, and were written down as warning for us, on whom the accumulation of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Hymn number 368. <laughs> Thank you. 
chapter 13, verse 1 through 9. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those eighteen who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I will dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. The word of the Lord. I don't know if you noticed, but all four scriptures we read today talked about food, eating, and drinking. And we're during the time of Lent. And we are reminded that Jesus fasted for what? 40 days. And he was tempted. And we see the same theme occurring in all of these scriptures. That we are faced with temptations. And that there are more important things in life and food and drink. In all the scriptures we see the same theme. Starting first in the gospel, we see some of them present came and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. And this was an abomination for Jews because they believed that you should not eat blood and anything sacrificed to a false god, much less a human blood, would be an abomination. And so Jesus asked them the question, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? And the answer is, no. We are all human beings equally before God. And we're equally tempted. And sometimes things happen. He goes on and said, Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? And the answer is, no. <coughs> as a matter of fact, as Jesus faced his temptation, and as we face our temptation, we too sometimes are what? Guilty. We fall for sin. <coughs> Paul writes in the book of Corinthians, I don't want you to be ignorant of the facts, brothers and sisters. I don't want you to be what? Ignorant. Unfortunately, <coughs> so many of us are ignorant when it com com comes to sin and life. We look around and see other people doing things that are wrong and or we look around and see the war or even the virus and, and we start thinking maybe it's because of what? I don't know if you caught it. Putin used that as one of the excuses for invading Ukraine as that they are supporting the woke society and that they, we want to denazify them because they are what? So Paul wants us to not be ignorant. He pointed out from history concerning the Jews. 
while they were wandering in the wilderness, that they passed through the same water like we do. They were baptized, they followed, and they ate and drank the same spiritual food. In other words, they were no different than you and I. As human beings, it doesn't matter a thousand years ago, three thousand, four thousand, we are human beings. And we are faced with the same what? Problems. Temptations. We might have evolved and have modern technology. But we are still what? Human. We still have the same desires and temptations and problems. I notice that as I get older and different parts start creaking, you know. We have we face the same what? Problem. None of us are better off or worse off than the other. Paul points out that these things happen to them as what? Examples. Examples for us to learn from. Unfortunately, a lot of us repeat the same problem over and over again. The war in Ukraine, nobody thought it would what? Happen. Why? Because, you know, nobody thought that somebody would be like Hitler and just invade their neighbor and bomb and do all these things. How naive we are. As human beings, have we changed? Not really. Paul points out, these things happened as examples, and they were written down as warnings for us. He goes on and said, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful. If we think we have overcome some of these issues because we are more sophisticated or better than 70, 80 years ago, not really. We are what? Humans. We all have the same problems. We face the same problems. We all have the same desires. He said, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Because the reality is we are faced with temptations. He goes on and says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to everybody else. Everybody face problems, temptations. <coughs> we all face it. The question is, how do we face it? The reality is God is a good, loving, gracious God. Paul continues and said, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Because the reality, you face the same problems that everybody else faces. But God is what? Faithful. Did my mic go out? But God is faithful, and so we see that God in his love gives us more opportunity and chance. We've been given many opportunities in the past, and he's still giving us what? More opportunities. That's what Jesus meant in this parable. He said to them, this man had a fig tree. And for three years, every year, during fig tree bearing time, he came and he looked for what? For figs. And it had none. So he told the man who was caring for it, cut it down. Why should it use up soil resources? And the man said, Leave it alone for another year. I'll dig around it and fertilize it. I like the word in 
the original language, we use the word fertilize to modernize for we're sophisticated. But their fertilizer was what? Manure. Sometimes life throws manure at us. <laughs> you know, you walk out there and you get it on your shoe and sometimes even above your shoe. It's, it's messy. Life is what? Messy. We are faced with all the same problems, but it's those problems that make us what? Stronger. So he said, leave it alone. I'll dig around it out. I'll put some manure there. And if it bears fruit, good. If it doesn't, it's another opportunity we have. God gives us opportunity upon opportunity. Isaiah puts it this way, come, those of you who are thirsty, come to the water. Those of you who have no money, come, buy, and what? Eat. Here he's pointing out that God provides all for us. Because we are sinners, we owe a debt we cannot pay. We pray every week in the Lord's Prayer. This past Wednesday, I pointed out in the Lord's Prayer, you know, forgive us of all, or lead us not into temptation, but it's, the word is we have a debt we cannot pay. But Christ is saying, come. You are thirsty, you are hungry, and buy, even though you don't have the money, because he paid that price on the cross for us. But so often we miss the point. He said, why should you spend money on what is not bread? What is not good? He goes on in verse 3. Give air and come to me. Listen that you may live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Listen. Listen. Unfortunately, we don't listen and we don't learn the lessons. As we face temptations and problems, we think we're the only one, what? Facing these and we are unique and special and nobody else have ever faced this before. We are human. We're not perfect. But God is a loving God who gives us opportunity to repent, to turn. And that is what this parable is all about. Jesus told them this. Do you think they were more guilty? I tell you, no, unless you what? Repent. As Christians, I don't know about you, but as an individual, I make mistakes. I face temptation just as you do, and I fail. But thanks be to God, we can go to him and what? Repent. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And the first temptation was turn this stone into bread. And he said, man does not live by bread alone. And as we think about all these things about eating, the figs or the bread or the wine or whatever kind of food, let us learn from the examples of others. Let us listen and learn from others. We don't have to do the same thing and repeat the same problems. Unfortunately, it looks like as a society, Putin did not learn from Hitler. Man have not learned. We are tempted. But given opportunity, I pray that we repent and turn to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Him of Reflection seven fourteen. <laughs>
who has come in Jesus, the Word made the flesh, flesh, to reconcile and make it new, who works in us and others by the Spirit, who trusts in God. We are called to be the your church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. During this season of Lent, we the church prays for the church in Estonia, Latva, and Lithuania. We will not have the Lord's Prayer at this time, but later on, so we will have prayer, silent prayer, and then the prayer of confession that we will do together. Are there any joys or concerns? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I appreciate prayer for our daughter Summer. Uh, she's been looking for a new doctor for her uh, syndrome. Uh, it's her previous one, which hasn't been anything. It is a, tr a struggle for her. Anyone else? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we are so thankful that as we face temptation, we know that you are there with us. Your steadfast love, your loving kindness. You know us. And even when we fail, we have opportunities to repent and to turn to you. We thank you for your love your grace, your forgiveness, and your acceptance of us. Father, may we learn from the examples of others. May we gain strength. We all face problems, temptations. We all have human desires. But Father, we ask that you allow us to stand firm, realizing that we are just like everyone else. And we need your love and grace. We pray for our church, Father. We ask that you be with us as a community. We ask that you bless us. Father, we pray for the church in Estonia, Latva, and Lithuania. Father, we think of the war that is currently raging in Ukraine, and we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people in Russia. We hope and pray, O oh Lord, that they can see that the war is senseless. The war is never the answer. To force someone else to do things because you want them to do it is wrong. Father, we ask that you be with all those who, even now, are being displaced, lost homes, faced with so many issues. We ask for your grace and love, and we thank you for those who are helping. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We think of Julie with her cancer. We think of Chris, B. We ask that you be with those who are not able to be here because of different illness. We think of Donna. Continue to be with Mary Beth as she heals. Lord, we just ask that you be with Summer as she seeks a new doctor to deal with her personal problems. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for Kathy and her surgery. We thank you for the many other ways you have blessed us, many of which we aren't even aware of. And Father, now we pause for a moment of silent prayer and personal confession. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failures to be truly human. Lord, we confess that we 
Lord, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our hearts, minds, and soul. Lord, we have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
and may they be a promise to share what we have received from your hand. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, 397, I Need Thee Everyone. <coughs> Thank you.